Good morning, Grade Nines. We're moving on today with uh, Part Two of Act Three, Scene Two. So we ended off yesterday where Lysander is trying to um, convince Demetrius to give up uh, Helena so that he can be with her, and he's saying that whatever le love he had for um, Hermia. Uh, Demetrius is now welcome to because he no longer wants Hermia, he wants to be with Helena. And Helena answers their speech with, never did mockers waste more idle breath. So basically you're both wasting your time. She doesn't believe either of them. And Demetrius says, Lysander, keep thy Hermia. So Lysander, you keep Hermia, she's the one you love. I will none. I want nothing from her. So I no longer want her. I don't want to marry her. If ever I loved her, all that love is gone. My heart to her, but as guest wise so journeyed. So it stayed only for a short visit. And now to Helen it is home returned, there to remain. So if we remember correctly, Demetrius was in love with Helena until he saw Hermia and then he became attached to her and left um, Helena in a lurch. And now he's saying that he was only in love with Hermia for a short while, if that. And now he's returning his feelings, um, his heart back to Helena where it, it belongs. And Lysander says, Helen, it is not so. And Demetrius says, disparage not, so don't cast doubts on the faith thou dost not know. So what you don't understand, lest to thy peril thou abide it dear. So you, unless you want to, at your own expense, pay dearly for it. Look where thy love comes. Yonder is thy dear. So look who's coming. That's your love. And then Hermia enters the scene. So he's referring to Hermia. And Hermia says, Dark night, that from the eye his function takes. So its function takes. It's a very dark night. The ear more quick of apprehension makes. So it makes the ear more sensitive. Wherein it doth impair the seeing sense. So while night restricts the sense of sight, it pays the hearing double recompense. So it compensates by making our ears twice as keen. So because we can't see as nicely in a, at, at night when it's very dark, our hearing, um, our senses for hearing are doubled in sensitivity and skill. Thou art not by mine eye, Lysander, found. Mine ear, I thank it, brought me to thy sound. So she's saying, I can hear you, Lysander, and it wasn't my eyes that found you in this darkness, it was my ear that has brought me to your sound. I recognize your voice. But why unkindly didst thou leave me so? So why did you leave me like that? Why did you just leave me in the middle of this forest? And Lysander answers, Why should he stay, whom love doth press to go? So obviously Lysander, under the spell of this love potion, wants nothing to do with Hermia anymore because he's now completely overwhelmed by his love for Helena, Hermia's best friend. And he's asking her, as though it's a stupid question, why would I have to stay when love wanted me to go? Why would I choose to stay with you? And Hermia obviously doesn't understand anything that's going on. She thinks Lysander's still in love with her. She doesn't understand why he would have left her. And she says, what love could press Ly Lysander from my side? So what do you mean? What other love is there to take you away from me? You love me. And Lysander answers, Lysander's love that would not let him bide. So it was my own love that wouldn't let me remain. Fair Helena, who more engilled the night. So I'm talking about beautiful Helena, who adorns or lights up the night. Then all yon fiery O's and eyes of light. So she lights up the night more than all the stars in the sky. So he's comparing Helena's beauty to being more astonishing, uh, more spectacular than all the stars in the sky. Why seekst thou me? So he's asking, what do you want? Could not this make thee know that hate I bear thee made me leave thee so? So the hate that I've felt for you, felt towards you, has made me leave. Isn't that clear to you? And Hermia says, you speak not as you think. It cannot be. And Helena answers, lo, she is one of this confederacy. So, oh, she is one of this conspiracy. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three. So all three of them have ganged up against me to fashion this false sport 
in spite of me. So as an attack on me. And while Hermia is thunderstruck, she can't believe her ears. She has no idea what's going on. Helena leaps to this conclusion that all of them are plotting together to make a fool of her. And Helena, being very angry, starts attacking Hermia. She says, Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid, have you conspired? Have you with these contrived? So have you plotted with these men to bait me with this foul derision? So Helena is comparing herself here to a tormented bear. Bear baiting was quite a popular entertainment in Shakespeare's time. And they would basically almost tease a bear, try and anger it. And, um, you know, play sort of chicken, getting it to maybe try and bite them or want to attack and, and laughing at it. So she's comparing herself to this bear that's being tormented into attacking, into being angered. Is all the counsel, the secrets, the intimate conversations that we have shared, the sister's vows, the hours that we have spent when we had chid reproach the hasty-footed time for parting us? Oh, is all for God. So she's saying, does it mean nothing? Our years of friendship, closer than sister or sisters, all these bonds we've made, the hours that we've spent, and all the times that we were angry for the time having passed so quickly, and for the fact that we had to leave each other's company and we couldn't stay the whole day talking together. All of those wonderful, amazing memories of friendship is that all forgotten. All school days friendship, childhood innocence. We, Hermia, like two artificial gods, so skillful gods, have with our needles created both one flower, both on one sampler, so one piece of embroidery, sitting on one cushion, both warbling, singing of one song, both in one key, as if our hands, our sides, voices and minds had been incorporate, so one body, as if though we had been one body, so we grew together. And she's looking at all of these happy memories. Helen is looking at these happy memories that she's shared in her childhood with Hermia, who's been her best friend. And looking at all of these amazing things that they've had together, she's identifying men as the com common enemy. Men as being something that has now parted them. She can't understand why Hermia would have turned against her and done this to her, given their amazing years of friendship and the bond that they have. She says, like to a double cherry seeming parted, but yet in an union in partition, two lovely berries moulded on one stem. So two double cherry, the idea of two cherries on one stem. And she's saying that the two of them, Hermia and Helena, have been so close since childhood, best friends, that they've grown up like two cherries on one stem, sharing one life source. So with two seeming bodies, but one heart, so they've had this connection, this friendship connection, they're twin souls almost, sharing a heart. Two of the first, like coats in heraldry, due but to one and crowned with one crest. So being of, of one family, basically, one person. And will you rent our ancient love asunder to join with men in scorning your poor friend? So she says, will you tear to pieces um, this love, this bond that we've had for the sake of entertainment, to join with these men and, and mock me? And she says, it is not friendly, tis not maidenly. Our sex, women in general, as well as I, may chide you for it, though I alone do feel the injury. So I'm saying, so she's saying all women would disagree with what you're doing. How do you betray your own gender? But more than that, how do you betray me as your friend? Now, Hermia doesn't understand anything that's going on, and she says, I'm amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. So she's saying, I'm really surprised with your anger. I'm not mocking you. It looks like you're mocking me. You're moaning in, at me. And Helen says, Have you not said Lysander as in scorn to follow me and praise my eyes and face? So she's saying, Isn't it your doing? Haven't you put Lysander up to it to follow me around and praise my amazing features to mock me? And made your other love, Demetrius, who even but now, who until a short while ago, did spurn, reject, kick me aside with his foot. She's saying, so haven't you done this? Haven't you stirred up Lysander and Demetrius both as a joke to pretend to love me, to hurt me, to mock me? Isn't this your doing? 
to call me goddess, nymph, divine and rare, precious, celestial. So Helena believes that Hermia has used Demetrius to mock her with these extravagant images of praise that he used. And she says them quite ironically now. Wherefore, why speaks he this to her he hates? So why is he saying these things to me now? And wherefore doth Lysander deny your love? So why does Lysander pretend not to love you now? So rich, so plentiful within his soul. So why is he pretending not to love you when I know the depths to which he loves you? And tender me and offer me forsooth affection. Um, so why does he offer me now his, his love and his affection? But by your setting on, except through you prompting him by your consent. So this he's doing this with your consent, isn't he? You're behind all of this. What though I be not so in grace, in favour as you, so hung upon, so heaped with love, so fortunate, but miserable most to love unloved, this you should pity rather than despise. So she's asking, what is your problem? I may not be in as favour, uh, favoured as you, you know, sought after by men, as thought of as, as beautiful. I'm not blessed with all of this love and admiration, um, but miserable that I love someone who doesn't love me back. Shouldn't you rather pity me than hate me and try and hurt me like this? And Hermia says, I do not, I understand not what you mean by this. So Hermia is completely lost. Helena, what are you talking about? And Helen says, I do. Persevere. Go on. Counterfeit sad, sad looks. So pretend to look all sad and miserable. Go on. Keep acting. Make mouths op upon me. So pull faces at me when I turn my back. Wink each at other. So wink at each other. Hold the sweet jest up. Keep the fine joke going. This sport, well carried, well managed, shall be chronicled, recorded in history. So she's saying, no, that's fine. You know what? Let, don't even bother. Just keep up your jokes. Continue to mock me. It's fine. This is fantastic. It's going to go down in history. Lucky you. You guys have, have really gotten the better of me. She says, if you have any pity, grace, or manners, you would not make me such an argument, so such a subject of mockery. If you were decent in any way, you wouldn't be doing this to me as your friend. So we ended off yesterday where Lysander is trying to um, convince Demetrius to give up uh, Helena so that he can be with her. And he's saying that whatever le love he had for um, Hermia, uh, Demetrius is now welcome to because he no longer wants Hermia, he wants to be with Helena. And Helena answers their speech with, Never did mockers waste more idle breath. So basically, you're both wasting your time. She doesn't believe either of them. And Demetrius says, Lysander, keep thy Hermia. So Lysander, you keep Hermia. She's the one you love. I will none. I want nothing from her. So I no longer want her. I don't want to marry her. If ever I loved her, all that love is gone. My heart to her, but as guest-wise so journeyed. So it stayed only for a short visit. And now to Helen it is home returned, there to remain. So if we remember correctly, Demetrius was in love with Helena until he saw Hermia, and then he became attached to her and left um, Helena in a lurch. And now he's saying that he was only in love with Hermia for a short while, if that. And now he's returning his feelings um, his heart back to Helena where it belongs. And Lysander says, Helen, it is not so. And Demetrius says, disparage not, so don't cast doubt on the faith thou dost not know. So what you don't understand, lest to thy peril thou abide it dear, So unless you want to, at your own expense, pay dearly for it. Look where thy love comes. Yonder is thy dear. So look who's coming. That's your love. And then Hermia enters the scene, so he's referring to Hermia.
Demetrius says, I say I love thee more than he can do. So Demetrius and Lysander are now fighting over Helena and trying to get her to pick them. Lysander says, if thou say so, withdraw and prove it too. So withdraw means go off with me to fight a duel. He's challenging Demetrius to a duel and the winner then would get Helena. Um, Demetrius says, quick, come. So like, what are you waiting for? Let's go. Hermia says, Lysander, where to tends all this? So what's going on? What are you doing? And Lysander is really mean here. He says, away, you Ethiop. Um, now, Lysander means to insult Hermia because of her dark complexion. In Elizabethan times here, a tan was very unfashionable. And she's got quite swarthy skin. She's quite tanned. So now he's using this against her, where everyone thinks she's quite beautiful. He's now mocking her for being tanned. He's being mean to the woman he's supposed to love. And Demetrius says, no, no, he will seem to break loose. So he will pretend to break loose. He's very scornful of Lysander. He thinks that Lysander is making a pretense to break away, but won't really do it. Take on as, so rant and rage as if you would follow, but yet come not. You are a tame man. Go. So he's saying, you, you're actually only pretending. You're never going to come and duel with me. You're weak. Go. Let me have her. And Lysander says, hang off, thou cat, thou burr, vile thing, let loose. Or I will shake thee from me like a serpent. So obviously, Hermia is trying to touch Lysander and re-establish the connection. What are you doing? Maybe grabbing an arm or something. And he's really mean to her. He says all of these different comparisons, comparing her to a cat, to burr, a vile thing, a serpent. And he's insulting Hermia. And Hermia cannot fathom why he's doing this. Why are you grown so rude, so so rough and unpleasant? What change is this, sweet love? What are you, what are you doing this to me for? And Lysander says, thy love. So he's scoffing at her. Out, tawny tartar, out. So this is an insult referring to her dark complexion and her fiery temper. So to her being tanned and to being quite feisty. Out, loathed medicine, O oh, hated potion, hence. So get out, go away. Um, you poison. So he's referring to her as poison. And now Hermia starts to be a little bit more suspicious and says, do you not jest? Like, aren't you, are you joking? And then Helena says, yes, sooth. So no doubt. And so do you. So Helena still thinks that Hermia is pretending and Lysander is pretending. And Lysander says, Demetrius, I will keep my word. To fight with you. Okay, my word to fight with thee. And Demetrius says, I would I had your bond. So I want your solemn pledge. For I perceive a weak bond holds you. So I perceive your weak love for Homia is holding you behind. And I do not trust your word. I don't think you really love Helena as much as I do. And Lysander says, what? Should I hurt her? Strike her? Kill her dead? Although I hate her, I'll not harm her, sir. So what do you want me to do? Must I kill this woman? Must I kill her mere to prove to you um, that I love Helena? He says, oh, look, I hate her. It's true, but I'm not going to kill her just for nothing. Now, Hermia finally begins to realize how, how serious Lysander is. And she says, what? Can you do me greater harm than hate? Hate me? Wherefore? So, but why? Oh, me. What news, my love? Am not I Hermia? Are not you Lysander? I am as fair now as I was erewhile, so as I was before. Since night, at nightfall, you loved me. Yet since night you left me. Why then you left me? Oh, the gods forbid. In earnest, shall I say? So she's finally realizing, do you mean this? Do you mean you hate me? That you don't love me? That you've left me? And Lysander's reply that we're going to see now is really, it's brutal, it's emphatic. He tries to really express his disdain for her. And while these speeches would have been quite comical for the audience to see, because they know that, you know, they have the dramatic irony in here, they know the background story, the speeches themselves are realistic enough not to actually be funny at all. So it strikes a chord with the audience because everyone has felt heartbreak of some kind or rejection. And Lysander says, 
I, by my life, and never did desire to see thee more. Therefore be out of, so abandon hope, of question, of doubt. Be certain, nothing truer, tis no jest, that I do hate thee and love Helena. So he really expresses his hate for her and his love for Helena. And Hermia says, oh, me, you juggler, you canker blossom. So now little Hermia is turning viciously on tall Helena, and now everyone is fighting. So the first person that Hermia now blames is Helena. And she's calling her a juggler, a cheat, and a canker blossom. A canker blossom is a worm that destroys a flower bud. You thief of love, what? Have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? So this is your doing. Did you go in the night and now steal his affection from me? And Hela says, fine in faith. Have you no modesty, no maiden shame, no touch, no trace of bashfulness, of shyness? What? Will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Fie, fie, you counterfeit, so you imposter, you cheat. You puppet, you, so you little creature. Helen, st Helen still believes that Hermia is part of this conspiracy to mock her, and she's really angry with her now for saying these things. And Hermia says, puppet? Why so? I. That way goes the game. So I see what you're doing. I see what your game is. Now I perceive that she hath made compare. So she's drawn attention between our statues. So Hermia thinks that Helena is insulting her because she is short. So Hermia is quite short and Helena is very tall. And now she thinks that that's what Hermia is picking on her for. She hath urged, drawn attention to her height and with her personage, her tall personage, so her um, imposing kind of uh, personality, her aura, aura her ambiance, she's, what she's drawn, um, Lysander to her with is that she's tall and striking and beautiful. Her height, forsooth, no doubt, she hath prevailed with him. So she succeeded in winning his love with her height, with being so tall. And are you grown so high in his esteem because I am so dwarfish and so low? So she thinks that Lysander would purely have been able to be turned against her for her being short. So maybe this is a little bit of an insecurity on her side. How low am I, thou painted maple? Speak. So a maypole would be a high pole that villagers danced around to celebrate the return of spring and they usually attach ribbons to it. So it would be a really tall figure, and in this way she's actually insulting uh, Helena, calling her a maypole, calling her absurdly tall. So it's quite a mean fight that's going on now. Everyone is fighting with each other. How low am I? I am not yet so low, but that my nails, so that my nails can't reach unto thine eyes. So I'm not so, sh so short, dwarfishly small, that I can't scratch your eyes out. And Helena says, I pray you. Though you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. So now she's getting a little bit worried about what Hermia is going to do to her, that she's going to attack her, and she's asking Lysander and Demetrius not to let her let Hermia attack her. And she says, I was never cursed, I was never quarrelsome, I have no gift at all in shrewishness. So I'm not gifted with being bitchy, I'm not a mean woman. I am a right maid for my cowardice. So I'm actually an ordinary, timid young woman. Let her not strike me. So she's saying, please don't let her hurt me. You may, you perhaps may think, because she is something lower, so somewhat shorter than myself, that I can match her, that I'm a good fight, fighting partner, sparring partner for her. And then Hermes says, lower, hark, again. So are you pointing at my, how short I am again? Is that all you have? And Helena says, good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. I ever more did love you, Hermia. Did ever keep your counsels, your secrets, never wronged you, save that in love unto. So except that because of my love for Demetrius, I told him of your stealth, your secret flight unto this wood. He followed you, for love I followed him. So now she's trying to explain and sort of salvage their friendship a bit here. And say that, well, I, I never actually wronged you except for the one time that I told Demetrius of your plans to elope. Because I, I wanted him to love me. But he hath chid me hence. So he tried to drive me away. 
and threaten me to strike me, spurn me, nay, to kill me too. And now so, if you will let me quite go, to Athens will I beg, will I take my folly back, my foolishness, and follow you no further. Let me go. You see how simple and how fond, how foolish I am. So she's trying to get um, some pity, some sympathy for Hermia, and basically say, look, I'm sorry that all of this has gone down. Just let me leave. I, I don't want to fight you. I don't want us to end on terms like this, and I don't want you to hurt me. And Hermia says, why get you gone? So go then. Who is it that hinders you? So what's who's stopping you? What's stopping you? And Helena says, a foolish heart that I leave here behind. So she's talking about the only thing that's keeping her is a foolish, stupid affection, um, this love that's that's keeping her behind. And she's Hermia's first thought is, what with Lysander? Is it the love you have for Lysander? And Helena says, with Demetrius. So no, not Lysander, with Demetrius. You know I love Demetrius. And he's telling her all of these nice things, and part of her really wants to believe it. And then Lysander says, be not afraid. She shall not harm thee, Helena. So he's trying to come to her aid here and defend her and say, don't be afraid. You don't have to leave. Hermia's not going to hurt you. I won't let her. 